Earlier this summer, I made my second trip to Abilene, Texas to visit the fine folks with Better Outfitters. Now, one of the most exciting parts of the trip was a Bigfoot sighting, which I captured on my camera. I don't like that joke at all. <laughs> All right, lame jokes aside, we spent a lot of time exploring their different trailer options, and one of them in particular has been on my mind ever since, and that is Sherpa Trailer's Bigfoot. Now, when I was out there in the Texas heat scoping out the Bigfoot trailer, it occurred to me that this thing is an ideal solution for that segment of the overlanding enthusiasts that want a custom rig that specifically fits their needs. Now, some overlanders prefer the opposite direction and get a rig that is completely laid out from A to Z, and all they have to do is hook it up to their vehicle and off into the woods as they go. But that's not who the Bigfoot Sherpa Trail is for. It is aimed squarely at those of you that want a rugged off-road base, or kind of call it blank canvas, if you will, that you can outfit with your pieces and parts for your particular type of adventures. And this is what I was thinking of as I'm looking at this trailer and it just dawned on me like, man, there is a lot of really cool things that I would do to this. Because again, when you when you see the matrix for what it is, you start kind of formulating or formulating rather kind of what your strategy or in my case, what my strategy be, would be with this trailer. So that's what we're going to discuss today. So buckle up for a quick overview of Sherpa Trailers, Bigfoot specs and features. And then we're going to shift gears. We're going to go into a detailed discussion of some of the possibilities available to you for turning this into an off-road beast of a trailer. Well, it's already an off-road beast of a trailer, but turn it into your off-road trailer of your dream. So, uh, Let's get on it. Now, kicking things off, you get a five by eight foot interior, which as we'll discuss here in a little bit, is plenty of room for adding all sorts of custom goodies. Now, this is a aggressive off-road model. Uh, so you're getting 31 inches, 1050 R15 tires and heavy duty aluminum fenders with a bat wing step on actually both sides of this thing. This thing is really beefy. Now the trailer comes with straight Dexter axle, 1400 pound leaf springs on each side. Now the walls and floor are made of three quarter inch exterior grade plywood, which is covered with carpet on the inside and on the ceiling is a beautiful mahogany plywood. Now the ceiling also is constructed of two by four ribs about every 12 inches or so. Now the front and rear bulkheads are two by four construction as well. And the ribs also have are pocketed for added sturdiness. Now the roof features a one and a half inch foam insulation between the ribs, which depending upon what season you are in is great for keeping the cold in and the heat out or vice versa. Now the outer skin is a uh, zero four zero aluminum. Now the extra walls are covered with the 24 gauge uh, sheet metal flashing, which comes in your choice of 23 different colors. So as you can see, Sherpa trailers really gives you really a good base for building a killer off-road trailer, but that's just the basic specs. Sherpa trailer takes it a whole step further with a wide range of standard features that make the Bigfoot an even better option for building your perfect adventure rig. Now there are two doors, one on each side of the trailer and it has adjustable windows and screens. So, you know, you these windows really offer a nice cross ventilation, but the Sherpa trailer enhances that supercharges that with a vent on one side and a 12 volt beast of a fan on the other side. Now there is interior and extra LED lighting with also a six outlet power strip on the front bulkhead along with an external inlet for extra power from a generator uh, power bank or whatever the hell that you're using. Now you can add a roof rack which in turn can support a rooftop tent of your choice. I mean this thing is pretty big so you have a lot of options here now there's a two inch receiver hitch on the back of this thing for uh, added cargo rack or bike rack and there's a wheel jack on the tongue to assist in maneuvering the trailer as you need now all of this in a compact package guys this thing weighs just 1300 pounds dry and the tongue weight is only 140 pounds not bad right now it goes without saying that having such a highly custom built trailer has its benefits yeah there, there's a few here. You get extreme flexibility in the design, which make the Bigfoot trailer as minimum or as luxurious as you want. So you can decide what features are important as opposed to going on to a lot, finding something that's already kind of turnkey solution and get stuff with features that 
are not important to you or that you don't want. So starting off with a blank canvas like the Bigfoot, I mean, it certainly has some cost savings as well. So it can be far cheaper to customize a trailer like this yourself as opposed to buying a trailer that's already completely outfitted. Now, besides these basic features, Sherpa Trailers offers a wide range of optional accessories that will help you create your custom off-road trailer that specifically addresses your needs. So for example, you can add a 270, I don't know why I did that, you know, whatever, I'm gonna own it. So you can add a 270 degree awning for plenty of protected outdoor space. And you can also add a large rear door in the back of this thing that's gonna offer much improved access to the interior of the trailer. And if we're being straight here, it also increases or enhances the airflow as well. I know what's popular with a lot of folks right now is being able to have or adding enclosed outdoor space. And you can do that with this as well. So Sherpa has you covered as that with a awning room that is perfectly fitted for the Bigfoot trailer. So whether you want added interior bunks or a heater or a fold up side table or something in between, the Bigfoot trailer is ready to accommodate your needs. All right, so now the big question is, how might we go about customizing this bad boy? Now, obviously, there is no single answer to this. There's certainly no one size fit all, but let's go ahead and explore the choices that personally I would make in this situation. And this is what I was talking about in the beginning of this video. As I'm out there and I'm looking at this thing, I'm going around this. And again, when you see this thing in person, any of the photos or what you're seeing in front of you right here is could do this absolutely no justice. And it's funny because I'm a professional photographer, so I'm used to looking at photos, videos all the time and so forth. But again, when I'm there, there is just, I know it sounds so cliche, but the photos, what you're seeing here doesn't know justice. But as I'm there, I'm looking at this thing, I'm realizing, man, there's a lot of cool things. So this is how I would do it. So as many, you know, I like to cook. So I'm gonna start off with the kitchen in the back. Now think about it, you have a five by eight space already in there. This is a blank canvas, so personally, I think what I would do, because that, remember that door opens up to the driver's side. So I'm six foot, so I would, even though, which we'll get to a moment, I would want to add a rooftop tent onto the top of this thing. But I don't want to destroy my interior space by using it all for storage. So I'm going to keep that in mind. I would put, because they have these slides. Let me see. They have these slides, and I think if we were to, sacrifice 16 inches in the back along that five foot spread there that would slide out with the kitchen a two burner like a camp shaft or a dominic stove of some sort uh, or a partner stove something like that on one side have a little uh, pop-up sink and so forth now mind you this trailer doesn't have water tanks so you can add whatever water you want on there so speaking of water i would add two five gallon uh, jerry cans on each side at above the axle or behind it and would have some sort of hose going down or you know some sort of uh water you know, line bringing the hose i had to think where i was going to go with this bringing it down to that little portable you know those little pop-up sinks so above the sink would add actually have a dual purpose as a chopping board or it would have you pop the sink out and you can use it for the sink itself uh i would put the fridge in the nose of the trailer and incidentally in the back when you slide the kitchen out, I would, I'm visualizing a bunch of storage that would go right above that. At 16 inches, you still have plenty of room to lay down inside this thing, even at six foot and change. Now on the top, as I mentioned, I would definitely go with the roof rack. 100% put the roof rack up there. I would put a rooftop tent on top of that. Now I would also add just visualizing between three to 400 watts of solar onto the roof of the of the tent as well. And that's important for reasons I'll expound upon here in a minute. But from in terms of a battery management standpoint, you guys know I'm a Red Arc guy. I really like, uh, in my Turtleback, I have a Red Arc manager, Red Vision uh, setup in there, and I absolutely love it. But a buddy of mine was recently talking about, with his Turtleback trailer, uh, switching from the OEM switches that they put in there and putting the uh, switch pros in there and it's pretty cool because it's user-friendly and you I mean it's very easy to operate so um, 
battery management, yeah, for me, Red Arc. Uh, now, going back on top with the rooftop tent, I would probably put something up there that folds out. And so you get a little, little, uh, uh, actually a lot of space in those style tents. Uh, now I would, because we do uh, year round camping, I would go with a hundred percent, a heater. Now in my turtleback, I have a two kilowatt auto term or planter distribution, uh, diesel heater in the nose of it. It takes up barely a little room, but in this case, because we're talking about, you have that living space down in the, uh, the Sherpa Bigfoot itself but also in the tent. So that two kilowatt, I think I would go with a four kilowatt diesel heater. Uh, and what I would do is I would have kind of a Y, uh, you know, splitting out that heat. So half the heat would go down stairs. And if anybody's upstairs, the rest of the heat will be going up in the tent as well. So that would be pretty stinking cool. Now, air conditioning, this is what I was talking about uh, before with regards to the solar on the top. Now, there's been two different uh, AC units that I've been testing out. You have the Zero Breeze, which is fantastic, about 2,300 BTUs, uh, and it only pulls about 230 watts of juice. And then you have the EcoFlow Wave 2, which is a little, little chunkier on the power. It's going to pull down about 430 watts and so forth, but you're getting 5,100 BTUs. In this particular case, I would still probably go with the Zero Breeze, at least in this set up here because with the ah, jury's out the lunch okay you know the and i'll share with you why because with the three to four hundred watts of solar on the roof of this thing you can because the, the zero breeze only pulls down uh, 230 watts you could almost indefinitely run that zero breeze now assuming you had like two to three thousand watt uh battery bricks someplace inside this thing so that's going to charge up during the day and that would probably last it through the night, assuming you have uh, one or two of the Zero Breeze batteries with that. But yeah, anyways, and if you do a lot of shore, you know, where you have like a, a shore power or you have like a generator of some sort, the EcoFlow is the way to go because that thing is a beast. I've done, we've done some uh, hot weather or hot weather camping with that, and it just, it's no joke in terms of portable AC. But anyways. Going back to this, and speaking of power, rather, um, I would go with two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Now, my turtle back, I'm running uh, uh, Ultimate Tron, and I like these batteries because I have the, the battery readout with it, uh, and they're heated and all that other fun stuff. Because again, we do 24 hour, 24 hour, we do 365 day uh, year camping, and over AGM, yeah, 100%, because right there, when I moved from lithium, I'm sorry, from AGM to lithium, I shaved about 60 pounds. But anyways, 260 degree awning is an absolute must. But again, as you can see here, there are a ton of options, but these are just how personally I would set this up. Um, but again, there is, there's just so many things that you can do with these trailers. How about you, if you had this, this blank slate in front of you how would you set this up leave a comment down below but one thing i do want to point out here when adding features and accessories like this there are some safety considerations that you really need to make for example you want to distribute the weight of the additions that you make throughout the trailer to maintain safe and easy towing experience additionally if you do any electrical work and this is not something that you do day in and day out and you know just have the have that have that work checked out just to be safe now also you want to be prudent to check with your state's uh, department of transportation to learn about any regulations regarding the width height exterior lighting and other requirements for a trailer like this. For example, you can't add an accessory on the back end of the trailer that blocks the brake light from view. Now, in addition to these safety features, it's also important to go into the process with budget. Determine how much you can spend and stick to it. There are so many accessories that you can add to this trailer, so it would be really easy to spend all your money before you know it. Now, as I noted earlier, there's no single setup for the Bigfoot trailer that fits everyone's needs, but this exercise exploring what I would do hopefully inspires you to consider what you would do to customize this trailer. I mean, it's all about choice. Folks, the red pill or the blue pill. Now, of course, Better Outfitters team is ready, willing, and able to help you out in the process. Not only can you buy the base trailer from Better Outfitters, but you can also pick up all sorts of accessories to build the perfect trailer. Now, if you 
happen to be one that wants to be able to pick out stuff, but you don't want to do the installation, Better Outfitters can actually do that as well. So again, either you want to do the work yourself or you can pick up all the goodies from there, or if you want Better Outfitters to do it, either way, they can take care of you on that. Now, I've left links in the description so you can learn more about Better Outfitters and the Sherpa Bigfoot trailer. Or if you like, you can drop questions in the comments and I will be certainly happy to help. All right, friends, and that is it for me. Of course, it brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found this discussion to be enlightening. If so, drop a like if you don't mind. Your likes, comments, shares, and Subs are always appreciated. Well, friends, I'm going to be shutting off these cameras so you get out there, stay healthy, and find your adventure.